All right, hopefully we are live again. G'day, g'day again, guys and girls. Welcome back to the Racebeck Esports channel. Again, it's the Regional Leagues night. We're back again for the Pacific side of things. We're here again for Tier 4 this time around, back once again at our Round 12 track, which is the Spanish Grand Prix. It is 4.655 kilometers, 2.892 miles, two DRS zones, one down the front straight and one down between zones 9 and 10. 16 corners make up this track, seven to the left and nine to the right. We should be in for an interesting... Uh, Hopefully an interesting race once again, like we were in Tier 4 last time around. But I'm not by myself this time around. Thank God for that, because I, I don't know how my voice would go after doing two streams at once. But um, I joined in the commentary box. Hopefully you guys can hear him in the background. Hopefully he isn't too loud. Got Alex Pato alongside me in the commentary box. So Alex, welcome, mate. Yes, it, uh, it certainly is. This track is not very known. Oh, hello. There's one of the Red Bulls just into the grass. I'm not sure exactly which one it is. It's uh, the one that's not showing a gamer tag for me. So that's lovely stuff. But uh, yeah, this track is not really known for its wet weather stuff anyway. But um, you have some info, Alex. I think that uh, we're not going to have rain for the race, I do believe. Yeah, yeah, of course. You're right. And uh, the race is going to be all dry, which is kind of a shame because we are not going to see that uh, kind of different strategy between the top 10 and the rest of the drivers because um, analyzing the data, uh, the softs are not a really good start uh, tire to start the race with um, so everyone will start I think from mediums to hards and this truck is really demanding on tires and you need a really um, high downforce setup because it's full of corners and uh, yeah, but I'll let you so we've already got some lap times currently in the moment. We're just a bit 12 se uh, minutes left on the clock. Nearly said 12 seconds. What am I thinking? James Cruz currently leading all the way with a 27.927. Hopefully the stream is not too bad, guys. This is obviously this is the first time I've uh, done streaming and uh, well had a commentator alongside me. So hopefully it isn't too bad. But luckily I've got a backup recording just in case. We've got. 11 guys that have already set lap times at the moment. James Cruz obviously leading the way, like I said. 27.927. Semi Pro there in second. Albino Josh. El Tonki there in fourth. Drow. Cross Professor. Supercharge. F1 boy. Uh, I've got to really work out, actually, who's the guy in ninth. Uh, this is going to be really helpful here. If this. Uh, let me have a look here. Ah, oh, seeing goat there. Okay, fair enough. Uh, he's in the, one of the Red Bulls. D Lad Lad in tenth. Uh, Black Moon eleventh. Reedy in twelfth. Uh, Dan the Racer and Hold Up Man Dan tent sandals. Benano's Trent and Toto and Gala's still yet to seven times. So we've got seventeen runners. So it should be. A, hopefully we're in for an interesting race. Hopefully we see a bit of mixed up strategies up and down the grid. Although there weren't too many mixed up. Although in tier three, I did notice a lot of guys. We're starting on the mediums. There's the odd person that started on the softs. I think only one person that started on the hards. So I was actually a bit surprised that a lot of people didn't do the opposite strategy back in Tier 3. But you can see a few guys are starting to struggle a little bit with these conditions. There probably won't be... You'd probably think majority of these guys will be having dry setups on these cars anyway. So they've got to manage as best they can in this weather before they get to the race, don't you reckon, Alex? Yeah. Of course, and uh, in the meantime, there's a semi pro on the Ferrari you get to P1 with 27.7. I think the track is actually ramping up, to be honest. Um, I'm seeing more and more drivers being faster than uh, the times which have been said before. So I think the rain is not going to stop, but still, you will find more and more grip going, going on with this qualifying, and it will be really unpredictable to see you will get pole. 
Yep, like you said, Semi Pro's got that at the moment. A 27 715 is uh, one of the Renaults just off the racing line. I think it was showing yellow flags. Hold up, man. Dan. Well, it was, of course, our last race winner back at Mexico after well, his teammate and uh, Trent Sandals have uh, got uh, time penalties, which uh, really cost him. And hold up, man. Dan was, I think, had the, can't remember if he had the lesser penalties or had no penalties at all, but sort of really worked out for him in the end. It was his first rate race win. Broke a six-race winning streak from uh, uh, Tent Sandals there. So, um, unfortunately, his race winning streak did come to an end for him, but it didn't really matter too much because the championship has already decided. We'll get onto that a little bit later on in the standings. But um, let's see if there's anybody on a flying lap. If, if, or is there anybody on a flying lap here? We can go on board for a lap, potentially. Cross Professor just goes into fourth position here. Uh, is there any, anybody starting a flying lap you can see there, Alex? I'm just checking. I will let you know if I find someone. Um, but I think four drivers are actually not doing just one flying lap with this uh, set of inters. They're just going like two or three laps. Um, let's see. There's F1 boy. I think, yeah, he's three lap. I think. Do you want to do you want to take us for a lap around the, the bus circle of Barcelona, Catalonia? Uh, the thing is, I uh, don't know if I'm synced enough, so it's better if you should do it. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Here we go through turn two and through the flying long turn three. It's usually flat in these wet weather conditions. Uh, not not in these wet weather conditions. I should say, usually in the dry, it would be. But in we go to turn four. Nice and tight into the corner, running it a little bit wide. Losing the back end a little bit, but not too bad. Keeping the car nice and straight into turn five. Don't want to run it out too wide. Nice and easy on the power. It's a tricky section here of seven and eight we're going into. It'll be nice and cautious through here. Can catch a lot of drivers out and to turn nine. Nice and cautious as he just runs it a little bit wide and is just invalidated. So, uh... We've put, we've put the commentator's curse on him there. <laughs> Sorry, F1 boy. It uh, was looking all decent at the moment. But you'd be surprised. A lot of guys are finding the track limits around here. There plenty of them around there, don't you reckon, Alex? Yeah, track limits are really strict around here. And as you saw on the onboard lap, this track is really demanding. I mean, it's really demanding already on dry conditions, especially on tracks. But imagine running on inters with a dry setup. Uh, it's it's gonna be painful for this, these guys to get a good lap in, and in the meantime, James Cruz gets P1 again. Uh, he goes really close to the 26s uh, with 27.1, so GG to him, and for now he's looking good. Yeah, very nice for him. He's been doing the double duties, him and Gala, as they did uh, tier 3 a little bit earlier on, so and they did this last week as well at Mexico, so... Uh, Doing double duty. Plenty of race miles under their belt here at Spain. They'll be probably be sick of it after this one. But uh, hold up, man, Dan there in second spot and semi pro in a third. There's not too many changes that these guys can do. Obviously, once they once they leave the garage, they can't really do too much setup. They can probably change the front arrow a little bit and maybe there's not there's not too many stuff you can change. In the setup, is there, Alex? Do, before they could, pro they'll obviously they could change it back for later in the race, but there's not a lot they can do. They'll probably have to suffer a, a lot of it, like you mentioned, with the dry setup for this one before the dry race. Yeah, exactly. I mean, with part Fermi, you only can adjust front wing angle and uh, differential, and I think tire pressures. So in the end, the setup is said and done for the race, uh, and conditions don't really help the car getting a lot of grip to be honest but it's a really technical track and qualifying around here it's really really important it's almost key to nail a lap around here because track position as well is really important here there's not too many overtaking spots i think it's just turn one and turn 10 i think uh even if turn 10 is just a not that i mean it's a short uh, straight so it's really difficult to overtake around here and uh the key um uh, topics around here are like getting a good qualifying pace and of course not getting stuck into traffic which is going to be important uh, towards the second part of the race I think 
Yep, fair enough indeed. As you're just seeing Toto there in the Renault, who's had a bit of a moment, looks like, come through turn nine. He's out of qualifying, so he won't set a lap time. His teammate is now retired in the pit lane. As, as I'm just looking at Bulba here with uh, Tent Sandals here. He's way off the racing line here. Just did validate as a, one of the Haas cars. So a lot of these guys are getting caught out with these wet weather conditions by the looks of things. And the racer just goes to the front row of the grid at 27.391. So not really got much time left, about four minutes to go. What do you reckon, Alex? Do you reckon somebody may crack a 26? Well, yeah, it's an option. Um, I think some drivers can actually because they're going to get more and more confident uh, with the track conditions. And I think grip gets better and better, so... Well, there's potential for it. Let's see. For example, James Cruz has just started lap. So let's see if he can nail it. Um, and maybe we can go on board with him. Um, see what he can do. So it's now around turn four. And he's actually already down one tenth. So looking good for him as well. I'm going to check the situation by the um, drivers, uh, the other drivers who are on the lap. Uh, I think Semi Pro is about to start a lap as well. And Blackborn. Oh, Blackborn spins and pushes out of turn 3. Out of turn 2, sorry. Uh, lost the car. So we're back. That might be the last time we see spins. That might be the last time we see spins out of that corner, I dare say. After what I saw in tier 3 earlier on, but. Here we are, James is on fresh rubber as Trent is now at 10 sandals, Ben owns Trent, obviously. He starts, he'll be starting from the rear of the grid, doesn't really need to do much. El Tonk, he's been disqualified for, uh, in the wrong, going the wrong way. It's not going to be a great start for him, he'll be starting from the rear in 17th. Let's see if James does improve, he does, 26-3! Literally blown out of the water. They're only a second quicker than anybody else. No doubt there will obviously be guys that may uh, go a little bit quicker than get close to James's time. But, geez, whiz, that's a nice lap time there for James Cruz. What do you reckon? Hard to beat? Or anybody maybe they get up there in the for the pole position? Well, it, I think some drivers can get close to this time, but 26.3, wow, that's a statement, to be honest, and, uh, yeah, a take big statement. JC, so, yeah, yeah, statement for now, and, uh, I think he's gonna also try again, I think, not now, uh, but still less than two minutes remaining, so he's got time, definitely, to have another fast, uh, fast lap, if he has enough fuel, of course. Uh, going by the red indicator that's flashing, I'm going to say he doesn't have a lot of fuel. It's usually, you want to have a little bit of fuel up your sleeve so you can do maybe a couple of runs at least, at best. You can like have a quick run, have a and then a cool down, and then go for another quick run here. So, obviously, I think James is probably going to be coming into the pits and retiring, I would say. Ooh, he gets a little bit sideways, cuts across this pit lane exit, and... That'll be his qualifying session done and done. Uh, done and dusted, I should say. Uh, so who's going to be the first to possibly finish off their lap time? Is Drow's another car. It looks like it's crashed at turn nine. He uh, exited at turn nine. Pretty much nearly the same spot as where Toto was a little bit earlier on, so... Yeah, and Blackmon gets a purple in the second sector right now, so watch out for him. I mean, sometimes though in this game in the second sector, yeah, exactly, yeah. But, you know, still down on its lap time <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna mention that the uh, the glitches this game is well and truly known for glitches around this place so uh we'll wait and see how that one pans out so let's see where he goes here he's currently fourth stays fourth doesn't improve at all there's got a bit of time left up this sleeve only get 26 seconds up the sleeve sorry go on Watch out for Old Dog Mendon who gets P2 50 temps away from James. 26.6. Yeah, last out race winner. Uh, who's going to be the next one? Looks like Galaz, I'm going to assume, coming through the final chicane. Take it nice and cautiously out of here. 
Around the final corner. This will be his one and only final lap as the checkered flag comes out. As I think he just may have run out of fuel coming across the line and it didn't really improve at all. Uh, who's that next one? Racing points. Uh, Pros Professor's retiring into the pit lane. I think he's done. F1 boy will be the next one. He's currently in 12th position. Usually you'll want to have a good starting spot around Spain because otherwise you'd probably get stuck in a little bit uh, of traffic as I think one of the Red Bulls has crashed out. Across the line for F1 boy. Goes to ninth for the 28.567. So he's in the 10. Well, it won't matter too much because these guys can start on whatever tire they want. But see so if we want to have a higher up position here to have a, a good crack. Maybe a top five or even the race win. Let's see what Black Moon does here in fourth. Does he improve? He does, but stays where he is. What about semi-pro behind in fifth? Look like he might improve. He goes to third. Nice lap from him in the 27-169. Uh, who else? Has he got hold up man Dan. Does he improve? No, it was a not the greatest of the laps there for him. Uh, who else we got? There's a Red Bull that's just missing a front wing. So uh, I think that's pretty much qualifying done at Duster there, Alex. So um, nice lap time there. For, I have no idea where this Red Bull's going. Uh, never mind. He's just ended in the wall. So, uh, and I caught it all on stream. So, you're welcome, CN Goat. But um, James Cruz, you put him that lap time very early on, and he starts from the prime position of pole. Yeah, exactly. And he's always been first so in every run he's done, to be honest. So, he's improved, like, every single lap and uh, well deserved to be honest it, the 27.9 then a 27.1 and then a 26.3 eight temps each lap improving uh so gg to him but what about for the world champion as well because he's gonna start in p15 but do you think you're gonna have he's gonna have potential to recover and get a really good uh, maybe driver of the day performance <laughs> Oh, well, who knows with, uh, with Trent. We'll have to wait and see whether he is going to have a little bit of fun here. Obviously, like you mentioned, he's already wrapped up the championship with... Uh, actually, we'll bring that up while we've got an opportunity. As you can see on the championship screen. Well, obviously, Alex will probably will not see it, but uh, you guys and girls will. We probably had a little clip beforehand, but he's got a 108-point advantage. So I pretty much I, I said this, I think, last week. If he stayed above 104 points after Mexico, he'd pretty much be done and dusted. So even if, I think, Galas, even if he won the last four races, he'd still be falling short. So pretty much Trent is the champion elect in tier four so a big congratulations to him that uh still plenty of battles going on right left and center with the minor placings got galas and hold up man dan rounding out second and third so that probably might be an interesting battle for the teammates and then el tonki in fourth who missed last week because of a power outage that he had at his place so he want to rectify well hopefully he doesn't have a power outage first so he can actually race so that'll be an ideal start for him we got uh, Dan the Racer in fifth, Prost Professor in sixth, then James Cruz who starts from pole in seventh. Uh, we got CN Goat in eighth, Black Moon ninth, then Reedy rounds out your ten, and you can see where everybody else is up and down the uh, the driver's standings. You can have a quick we'll pause of that if you want to, but we'll go quickly have a look at the constructors. That's still up for grabs here, actually. Alpha Romeo on 268, lead by, uh, what's that, 16 points over Williams, so that's still up for debate in these last four races of the season. Racing Point in third on 190. Mercedes in fourth on 152. Red Bull on 141 in fifth. Then McLaren in sixth on 123. Uh, and then Alpha Tauri in uh, seventh on 94. Renault in eighth and 79. Haas in ninth on 59. And Ferrari rounding out the 10 constructors with just this 18 points. So there's plenty of... Uh, positions up for grabs in the minor placing and the constructors so that's still up for grabs here as well but um what are we looking at at uh tire strategy alex yeah exactly and i think oh there's a surprise and actually mm. Blackmoon and Prost Professor in p5 and p6 have actually decided to start on soft so yeah well there are two or three options for the strategy in this race uh, you can go medium to start which is i think the fastest one considering the traffic uh if you start on softs then you can go soft hards but 
the hearts are gonna be like half a tenth, uh, half a second slower, um, like when the medium runners will uh, put the hearts on. Or you can go to stopper, so basically going soft, medium, medium. Uh, but then you have to do, you're gonna have to deal with traffic. So yeah, I think the red short is to start on mediums or maybe on hearts. Those are not a choice to be honest to start with. No one uses gear reset strategy. Maybe they want to get stuck in the DRS train, uh, even if DRS is not really for instruct to be honest. Uh, so let's see how drivers can do what the drivers can do in this strategy uh, and watch out now for block. Black Moon and Pros Professor because they're gonna have a blistering start compared to the others. Yep, they absolutely will on the fresh soft compound of tyres, so they want to make good use of their grip while they've got it. Otherwise, well, they'll obviously come back to bite them later on. El Tonki, the only one on the hard compound of tyres, so he's gonna do the opposite strategy. Now, safety cars could be could throw up anything as well, so we'll wait and see how this one pans out. But looks like we are all set to go here. Hopefully when the lights do come on, hopefully they do come on. Please tell me they are going to come on. Oh, there we go. We've got the five red lights coming on now for Tier 4 here at Spain. It's a very long hole, but away we go here. And it looks like a good start for the Alfa Romeo. Oh, the Ferrari's gone already. Semi-pro into the wall. We nearly saw the exact same thing. One of the other Alphas is in the wall. He's got front wing damage. But it looks like the other Alpha hole up man, Dan, has got away with that. Virtual safety car has been deployed. <laughs> and the, the, uh, is that the wow. other Ferrari in the background? It is Drow. It's a, it's a double disaster for the Ferraris already. He's missing his abs no front wing at all. So it's pretty much similar to what happened in Tier 3. It didn't even last a couple of quarters. And we already got, well, sort of a, sa we got a safety car in Tier 3. But a virtual safety car, this one, Alex. Wow, yeah, I mean, Semipro just lost his car, maybe getting too greedy on the accelerator in the, in the first phases of the start. Wow, but what a disaster for Ferrari, and now I think we're racing again. Yes, we are, so yep. watch out for Blackmore, because it's really close to supercharge. Maybe yeah, the soft compound of tyre runners haven't, haven't made so much inroads. I think Pros Professor's actually lost a spot. Well, these guys might have actually lost a spot themselves. So he's not quite close enough there. But it's his hold-up man, Dan, who got the better of the jump. So he got a much better start than James Cruz. He's already built that gap at right, the one second already. That's critical when DRS gets enabled on lap three. So it's a good margin for him. See who start the lap time at a 29.955. Pretty sure Galas was the other one that may have got the bit of front wing damage. But other than that, I think everybody's got through there cleanly. As to say that Galas is in the pit lane. And yeah, just ignore that. What's going on your screen now, guys? Lap 2 glitch is always happening in this game. Surprised it's still fixed even when I put a, a claim into Cody's about this. And they still haven't fixed the damn thing. <laughs> You would, you would think they'd learn, Alex, my after this. It's, my thing is, like, okay, okay. So, like, we, I don't have it. So, uh, we uh, well, it must be just uh, me. It must be just me. But it, it just, this, this glitch always happens from time to time. But it usually yeah, rectifies true. itself very, very quickly. Well, it took a little bit of time in Tier 3 to rectify itself. But it's got a lot quicker here in Tier 4. But still hold up, man. Dan leading the way over James Cruz in second. They're already building out gaps already. So these guys are breaking away in the DRS. I'm saying that supercharge is getting close to the back of Dan the racer. And then Black Moon, the leader of the soft compound of tyre runners. In fifth, F1 boy, the Pros Professor, that's CN Goat, Albino Josh, they're in ninth, and D-Lad Lad in the 10. For the back, who else we've got here? El Tonki up to 14th, Trenton 13th, hold up man, Dan 19555. Semi pros left the session, obviously. Didn't even last. I don't even know how far he got down the grid, but you probably want to forget the Spanish Grand Prix very, very quickly, I'd say. And I think TN Gold lost the position to the Renault. Yeah. Gosh. Yes. Gets B8. And uh, right now, DRS is enabled. Oh, and the Supercharger and then the Racer are actually on a scrap. Um, but. Right now, I think another race has a bit. 
yeah, good race for Tom Dove at the moment. Like, I mean, James. Oh, he's in the wall! Superchargers just bend it all together. Literally just caught the back end of that through turn seven and eight. That was always going to be a tricky corner. Was some people would get caught out. I'm actually surprised a lot more people didn't get caught out in tier three, but he's got some front wing damage and that's going to cost him big time in this one. Oh, that's a, oh, what is he doing? That is getting messy. That was not even, that was not necessary. I don't think that was just getting a bit silly there. I don't know why. Probably just outbroke himself there, but. He's going to have to come through the pit lane now with no front wing. There's going to have to be a long stint possibly on the hard cop out of tyres, although you never know. Might try something a little bit different. Yeah, and I mean, it's surprising that actually no one in the top nine is in the DRS train. So everybody in the top nine has a gap at least of one second or more to the car behind. And yeah, not really good for us, for us for taking to be honest. So let's hope like the situation will get better. The only battle that we're watching, like the close one, is for P9 with Ryanie six steps away from the Red Bull. And let's see, I mean, Supercharge Pits puts new hearts. It would be really hard to get to the end for him, to be honest, but still, no other choice that he had. And yeah, he's going to have to have a long stint or hope for a light safety car to maybe help him out here, but he's down in 15th, so that's really cost him a lot of time. Uh, so we got hold up man Dan. He's, he was bolting three, nearly three odd seconds, but now come back to 2.7 seconds. But like I said, the majority of these guys are pretty much outside the DRS window. As there's Tent Sandals getting a three second time penalty. The first one of the race. So no one really quite yeah. close enough, although saying that the, the two Red Bulls were really close because I did see CN Goat having a little bit of a terrible run through the final corner. Here we go. This might be a switch for position here at Red Bull. Uh, side by side. You had to run off the road there. It's CN Goat, but Delayed Late gets the P8. Would have been a bit, it's always a little bit awkward when the teammates race each other here. You don't want to really tangle with your teammate, do you? Yeah, never. Like, I think right now what is gonna, what we're gonna watch out is like the battle for B4 because, of course, Black Bull's tires are gonna start to drop off uh, in the last, in the next two or three laps. So I think F1 Boy has a shot right now to get track position. Um, let's see if Black Bull can. I mean, just try and get these tires until lap 7 or 8. But it's going to be a challenge for him not to lose position at the moment. Yeah, this is going to be a long stint for uh, for Black Moon and probably for Prost Professor as well. I think the longest, I can't remember what was the longest in T3, uh, but um, I think, uh, what was it? I uh, can't remember his name, but um, he took it, I think it was 11 laps on soft compound tires. But I tell you, he was like literally on the knife's edge. Of getting to the end there, yeah. he literally it was like nothing in it. Go back and watch tier three when you get a chance. As Drow's left the session, so I don't know whether he's just rage quit or what, or whether he's had a connection issue. I'm gonna send him an invite anyway. Yeah, thank you. So it'll be interesting to see how long these guys can go. Point Point nine of a second now. F1 boy just got in that DRS window. If he can stay in that window, he'll get the DRS. Through here, turn seven and eight. It's always tricky. He's not in that DRS window yet, but he's getting a little bit closer now. This Black Moose just starting to drop away here from uh, Dan the Racer. Keep an eye out as well with uh, Reedy as well. He's catching the other uh, delayed late and seeing goats not too far behind and probably could count Toto in that as also Trent and uh, El Tonki well Trent was getting close I think he's just ran a little bit too wide through turn nine he'll have to bide his time a little bit five seconds nearly that gap between the top the top two at the moment and Dan the race is actually now it in DRS range so let's see a change for second very shortly you never know yeah, exactly, and watch out for James Cruz because he's almost out of ERS and then the race has actually almost 100% of it 
So he definitely has a shot, like to overtake James uh, around um, turn one uh, in the stop. I don't think he will push it in turn ten, to be honest. It's not a wise choice uh, to make uh, because, I mean, you, even if you have the DRS advantage, it's really hard to get by um, for turn ten. It's a really, really uh, tight corner. Um, but let's watch out because I think he will overtake him soon. And you see the difference in ERS. You can set, you said it. It's got nearly ninety odd percent, and James is under ten percent. So it's not really going to help. Reedy gets a three second time penalty. He got he got the move done on delayed later turn one as well. I noticed as well. But this battle for second is really starting to heat up now. Dan the Racer can get a good run out of this final chicane. He might have a good chance going down to turn one. Let's see how this pans out. It wasn't ideal, but he'll get the DRS nonetheless. Just whether he'll be close enough. He'll have to burn up all his ERS now. James is not using his ERS. I think he's got him. There you go, Dan the Racer up in the second spot. Not really worth fighting, I don't think, too much as he runs a little bit wider. That'll be the dirty air. You get plenty of dirty air around Spain, that is for sure. Yeah, now it's going to be key for James to stick with him uh, and try to save some battery. Um, and try to stick, I mean, to be in the DRS train. Um, the DRS of Dan. Otherwise, he's going to lose big time. It wasn't a great run through 7 and 8, but he's got a good margin behind the Black Moon, who's, I think, starting to struggle a little bit on his softs. So if one boy is now in the DRS range in the Haas. Frost Professor's not that far in the background either. Supercharged three-second time penalty. This Prost is also the other guy on the soft competitor tyres. Keep an eye on this one. I'm not sure whether James will have another crack at Dan the Racer. You still get the DRS, but... I think it's a good run out of here or not when he's got an ERS because there's a lot of difference, 60 odd percent difference I think between those two. Keep an eye on F1 boy, don't really think he's quite close enough here. James closing, you get the DRS as that's CN Goat, three second time penalty. She runs in a little bit deep, that is F1 boy. Albino Josh was closing in on Pross Professor as well. These guys down here in 8th and 9th, they're going to be stuck together, I reckon, for this rest of this race because they're pretty much near each other all the way through. But Delayed Late actually just, I think, bottled a little bit coming out of the first couple of corners. Toto's closing in on the CN Goat as well. So what do you reckon? The soft competitor tires, these guys probably, what, this lap or next lap? What do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, the window is open for sure. And, oh, F1 boy was about to lose the car. Uh... Yeah, that's what you said about dirty air. Uh, well, it's quite time to pit and put some hards on, or some new mediums. I don't know what the drivers really, I mean, what the professor really want to do. But it's definitely time to pit. So lap, this lap or next lap, we need to pit. Otherwise, it runs a lot of time. Yep, as a, you're just getting a phone call right now, so I'll let you take that one. As uh, Black Moon is still staying out. What about Prost? In he comes. So, yeah, Alex did mention that a bit to me, that if he gets phone calls, he'll obviously take that as a priority. So in comes Prost Professor, the first of the soft compound of tyre runners. I do apologise if there's a little bit of lag, uh, frame drops here. Obviously, like I said, this is the first time I've streamed with, uh, with another commentator. I have done it with, in league races while well, I'm racing, but... Yeah, it's the first time I'm doing a commentary, so we're still learning. And again, the weather might have an impact on that. But so, Prost going on the medium compatter tyres. So that's definitely a, uh, a two-stop strategy. Supercharged now, 19.316, fastest up of the race. Wow, there's F1. Quite strange to get fastest up on hard right now at this moment of the race. Well, well done. I mean, definitely has the pace then. We've got plenty of warmth on those hard competitor tyres. Been on those for five laps, so you know, like I mentioned, Prost is on the medium competitor tyres, so that's definitely a, a bit surprised. Maybe, obviously, maybe doesn't think the hearts can go to the end 
or whatnot, but he's doing the two stop nonetheless. Let's see whether Black Moon will come in. Yes, he does. So that allows F1 Boy a bit of fresh air. Interesting to see what he puts on here as he gets it slowed down for 80 kilometers. Speed limit, which is probably, I don't know what that is in miles. I think, I think Alex, you probably would know what it is in miles around here. So he goes on the hards. Got it done. Like I said, these guys are stuck with each other. So, oh, you can say, oh, I thought he was going to get a good run there. It was Reedy, but uh, he just went a little bit too wide, got on the gravel, and uh, that's cost him a little bit of time there. He's still, looks like my maintaining the one in the, uh, the DRS window. So Black Moon went onto the hard compound of time, so he, looks like he'll be going to the end. He comes out ahead of the champion elect, Trent Sandals in 12th. Uh, in 11th, there's yellow flags. Is that Albino Josh? It is. Looks like he's got front wing yeah. damage as well. Big front wing damage. And yeah, and let's watch out for 10 sandals because he actually has got front wing damage. So that's why maybe he's not like uh, coming back uh, at this moment of the race. He's not even using his ERS. So maybe he's waiting to pit and then try to get um, like space yeah oh let's cross professor yeah let's buy yeah white cross uh so let's let's watch out for him in the second part of the race because he's gonna get his wing fixed I guess and I think he's gonna yeah. push like hell in the second part. Yeah, he's probably just just wants to have a little bit of a fun time here obviously already wrapped up the championship not really wanting to fight too much with anybody is albino josh now back into the lane now so yeah see now the right wing uh wing end plate is missing on trent's car so albino josh is in so probably be for an unscheduled stop i'd say and the, the, with the front wing change now and onto the hard so he'll have to go a little bit longer on that set Really, the only closest battle we got is Reedy and D Late Late. Seven, nearly odd, seven odd seconds up the front. So, hold up, man. Dan's in a world of his own here. Unless something dramatically goes wrong here, looking like possibility going back to back in race victories. And might, well, the rate it's going, obviously, with how the point system is, is a little bit different, obviously, to the real life Formula One one. I think it's based on the MotoGP uh, system, but. I think at this rate, with his teammate down in 14th, I think he might be pushing to go second in the championship at this point in time. With Z after this round, there's three races left, so it's always critical. And you want to always have a bit of bragging rights over your teammate, don't you, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. I mean, yeah, you can be friends with your teammate, but when you beat him, it's always like, you know, you can get a really good trash talking in it, like, and stuff like this, so. No, but yeah. I, actually, Alfa Romeo have a really big shot right now to get P1 in the constructors. Uh, yes. Of course, Ten Sandals is now uh, is gonna get like four points, I think. And yeah, you were right. It's based on the MotoGP system. So yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's the, this battle for the constructors is gonna be like uh, it's gonna keep us until the last race, I think, which is in Brazil. Yeah. Yep, so we've got entertaining with obviously this round and then we head to Jap Japan next week and then, well, Monaco Grand Prix, which, I mean, some people would say they don't like the track, but uh, especially if you're on this side of the of the fence, obviously on the commentator side, you probably would be enjoying it. But uh, we'll, we'll get to that when we get to Monaco and then Brazil to finish it off. That's just the ideal situation to, uh, to finish off the season. I mean, yes, Abu Dhabi is the usual finale but um i mean not really known as a great track brazil's really known as a really awesome way to finish off the season as uh see reedy getting very sideways just lost all that momentum to delay late actually so um there's not really too much battles going on here it's actually black moon is closing in on el tonki for ninth because obviously there's a difference on the uh the tire strategies is obviously fresh hards compared to you know relatively It'd be okay -ish hards, but of course they'll be starting to wear out a little bit here. But of course El Tonki can go long. Just run on cue. Is he going to go side by side here? Give each other racing room. And he gets that move done. There's Black Moon, so he gets back up into ninth place. Nice move. 
Very nice move from him there. Uh, Pross Professor's probably not too far behind as well. He's on the fresh mediums. So, want to make good advantage, take good advantage of this while he, he can. So we're probably not too far away from that window for the when the these guys will get off their medium compound of tyres. What do you reckon, Alex? A couple more laps on the mediums? These guys, they can go a little bit longer, obviously, compared to soft compound of tyres. Yeah, I mean, I think Mikims are going to start to drop off in one of the laps time. Uh, and then they're going to watch out for Black Moon because, I mean, he started on soft and he's going to struggle even now. He's going to get a big, big undercut compared to um, Dan Racer, Dan Victor and James, for example. I think Old Love Merdan is quite safe, to be honest. Uh, but, oh, when Toto retires, what's going on? Um, oh, safety, safety car. car! Well, okay, that that came out of the blue there. I don't know... What? That, okay, this this is a, a weird one. I'm pretty sure his car's in the pit lane, so... Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm just puzzled. I, I assume you'll be the same, Alex. So, this changes strategy up right now, anyway. Yeah. Wow. And now, I think right now, all the medium runners are in the pit. But... Right now, like, I mean, if I was Black Moon, I would rather go on mediums again, to be honest, if he has a new set. Because, uh, I don't know, like, I mean, for the top six, it's quite simple, they're gonna pit. But for the others, well, I don't know. Let's see what they can do, because the gaps are gonna be, like, of course, taken away, and. Uh, yep. Uh, but good for us, good for us, it's gonna be better racing. <laughs> yeah, so this will be I think, interesting. So, hold up, man, Dan. Dan, the racer. James Cruz are in. So the Alpha team will probably be a little bit longer because Galaz, his teammate, was not is in not long ago. So, might lose a little bit of margin. So, I assume majority of these guys will go on hards. It's delayed, late. Reedy, uh, the other Red Bulls. So, they're going to have to be done some double stacking here. So, obviously, seeing Goat will lose a lot of time with the double stack. Black Moon's going to stay out. She's not going to in take your interest uh, strategy, uh, Alex, with uh, going out to the medium. So, he's going to stick it out in the hearts. Probably mean he'll... Where is he going to put out in fourth place? He'll have to warm up those tyres quite a bit, obviously. Looks like majority of the team, everybody's in. Uh, Supercharge is staying out. Again, it'll be interesting one why he's staying out, considering he's on the level up of hearts. This would, be good, like, this would be good, like you said, for Trent, because this will help him, obviously, change the front wing. He's pretty much nearly back in this race. Uh, Altonki will have to go to mediums. Uh, they, pro they, I think they should get to the end of the race, I think. It, it might be a stretch, but I think they'll be okay. Yeah, and actually what surprises me is Pros Professor. I mean, he went from softs to mediums. Uh, but then he decided not to pit. So he's gonna pit again, I think. Uh, otherwise, yep. I mean, I don't think he can manage to get these tires last till the end of the race. So, wow. Yeah. And wh what about, yeah. what, 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 I mean, I was saying about good racing, I think Hold Up Mandem will be the only one who disagrees with me, to be honest, because. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's now, it's now leave. gone now. Yeah, so. We will need to build it up again from scratch. We'll see what happens with Prost. Is he going to dive at it? Yes, he is. So I was thinking whether he's going to take track advantage here, whether he's going to dive it in, but he's going to pit now, get it under the speed limit. So he'll go on to another set of mediums. If we keep an eye out on him, he'll be speedy. Probably might keep an eye out as well for El Tonki because he'll also be speedy as well. But we'll see the guys in the, the front. Oh, hards, okay. Yeah, safe one, yeah. That's simple. That's yeah, it's probably a safe one, yeah, if you don't feel like the mediums could get to the end of the race, but probably, where's he going to fall in behind? It'll be tight. Behind Trent, by the look of it. Uh, maybe not. 14th, actually, for him. Yeah, which is basically the last car because Jarl, uh Left the session, so. Yeah. 
So this changes up the strategy. Obviously, now most of these guys have pitted for fresh, hard competitive tyres. Although the odd one out, obviously, El Tonki on the mediums. So still got hold up man Dan, J Dan the Racer and James Cruz occupy the podium. Black Moon in fourth. He's out, still out there on five lap old hards. Uh, F1 boy. Uh, uh, oh, and Dan what? the Racer has overtaken uh, Old Up Man Dan because Old Up Man Dan lost the car uh, in the. Um, the which turns in? Wait. Seven and eight? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so. Oh, but yeah, I had a feeling. Okay. Let him back yeah. Pass. The safety car is going to be in at the end of this lap. I was, I was wondering why I saw Dan the Racer up at the top of the timing sheets, but uh, now I know why. So, but he has got it back. Surprised that there wasn't any penalties given, but um, anyway, we'll, we'll wait and see whether there will be any stewards' inquiries afterwards. And so everybody would just be now, because these uh, on the hard cop out of tyres, they'll be dead set cold, If you, especially if you're on the fresh... Hard cop out of tyres. It'll be cold. It might take a couple of laps to get up to grip. But here we go. Looks like a good jump there for Hold Up Man Dan. Although Dan, the race has gone with him. Just cover, straight, cover the inside line there. I think it'll be quite close enough for a move. No, he's not. So and these two are pulled away already over James Cruz in third. And Black Moon in fourth is still battling away with F1 boy. He'll be sick of the sight of that McLaren in front of him. That's the dirty air. d late late in sixth. Reedy in seventh. Supercharge in eighth. Uh, Seeing Goat in ninth. And El Tonki is on the fresh mediums. He'll be blazing as he goes for a move up the inside. Well done. Got it done. So he's up to ninth now. We have to catch that up to uh, Supercharge's 2.8 seconds a bit further up the road. So... I'll take good advantage as it looked like Gala's getting a little bit sideways there with Albino Josh. Hold up, man, Dan. Building up that one-second margin already. Number Dan the Racer. James Cruz coming back slightly to Dan the Racer. That was not the camera shot I wanted, Cody's. But anyway, these guys are already starting to pull away for Black Moon. They have a 1.7 second margin already. We've done the yeah, first lap on the safety car. So, sorry, go on. Uh, I was like watching El Tonki and he's not gained almost one second to supercharge. Uh, who looks aggressive though, with Brady. Uh, but El Tonki will have blistering pace first day in the next two or three laps. Uh, um, because of the tire advantage, of course. I see a Red Bull going side by side. No, okay. Sabino Josh tried to make a move. Uh, I'll see him go, but quiet. Get it, get it done. Then Sandals gets a penalty. Supercharge again on Ridey. On Ridey, sorry. My God. Not quite. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to really be on his onboard camera because he's got the gearbox glitch. Uh, we got Daniel. I, I'm going to think this is Toto actually. Hit the bloody gutter on the pit lane entry. That's why I was in the pit lane. That's an interesting one there. That, that's, well, that's why wow, it brought out the safety car. Probably wasn't intentional, obviously, but um, can happen from time to time, I think, around this track, or especially in the pit lane. Yeah. And Tonki's already in the DRS of Supercharge. I mean, he's not right now, but he will be for sure. Carlos tried to move there for 11th, but he didn't quite get it done, and Albino Josh just went a little bit too deep. We should get DRS enabled. 19.098 for Hold Up Man Dan. He fastest up the race. A little bit sideways there. Wow, that she gained. Oh, what a scrap. But it's still going side by side. Everything's going on here. Supercharged getting the move done on Reedy. And I think Garlas and Albino Josh still side by side. Here comes the other two in the background. Oh, there's a little bit of contact there. Runs him off the road there. Here comes Trent. He'll be trying to get a crisscross here. He's trying. He nearly got it then, I tell you what. It was so close. A little covering. Oh, Pross Professor's there in the background as well. Trent going very wide. Just managing to hang on. He's trying every which way for positions. Garlas in the dirt on Albino Josh. I think he's got this oh, one done. Battle. This is only for the minor placings, mind you, for 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th. But he gets it done, does Galas. He'll now pull away. 
Steel Adelaide gets a three second time penalty. Uh, Prost look, not quite close enough here, but 2.3 seconds, nearly 2.4 seconds now, that margin. So, looks like hold up, man. Dan has got the pace over the other Dan, Dan the racer, at the moment. James Cruz will have the DRS. He's not quite close enough. He's delayed late and F1 boy. Again, he's not really quite close enough here. Well, oh, Tonky would want to try. I mean, looks like he th it's not using his ERS at all. Which, I mean, it's good to save battery, man, but, like, you know, keeping it 90% for the whole race is not good either. So, but anyway, because Hold Up Man is now going away, like, and you need to do something about it if you want to win this race. Nearly three seconds, that margin, you can see the difference there. It's like 60 odd percent difference between Hold Up Man Dan and Dan the Racer. So he's just, we're just biding his time when he uses it. Obviously, we obviously want to use it with the DRS as he goes a little bit wider, turn 10. And he gets away with it, I think. I don't think James had a great run out of there. So this will help him out on the straights, obviously, if James is in DRS. So it'll help him manage to hang on. It was not the greatest of runs through the final couple of corners. He's still hanging off alive, dear life, although uh, saying that James did not have the greatest runs out of the final a couple of corners either at the chicane. So still in the DRS window, but he won't be really in range here. So this battle for sixth is on now. Supercharged 17 lap, uh, lap on hards. That's a pretty good pace. Up the inside he goes. It's a dunt. Carlos and Albino Josh are still fighting with 11th and 12th. Watch out for Reedy as well. Oh. He's thought about it. He's there or thereabouts. You want to be careful because his teammate's not too far behind. The late late's using a lot of ERS. He's got nothing and the red light's flashing. It's a little bit on the dirt. Get a good run through here, sort of. Sort of. We won't get the DRS. I don't think we'll delay it late. No, he won't. Possibly an opportunity as he covers the inside line, obviously. Trying to break that slipstream. But not really quite close. Oh, he runs deep into turn 10. That's the easy move there for Reedy. Oh, get it through there. Slide. Just saved it. No, I'll talk you a bit of him. Yep. He will. 19.075. So it looks like Hold Up Man Dan's got good pace on the hards. As they tell you what, Reedy was so lucky. That would have been a heart attack moment then if he ran off the road. And he might come under attack again for the Red Bull. And he will be. That's another switch around here. I think he really can with DRS. As he's still using ERS as delayed late through the quarters. I'm a bit surprised actually. I don't think it's really oh. ideal. He's got no, no, no ERS now, but you don't really want to be using ERS through the corners, do you? Because it sort of lights up the rears a little bit more, doesn't it? Yeah, and I mean, especially in this track where, like, tire wear is really high, you don't need to use the ERS in the corners. Uh, but actually, I was surprised for Brady because, like, I mean, it didn't even defend the position. Um, well, it's really good to stay in the DRS, but sometimes you just need to go and try to create a gap sometimes, you know? Hmm. I mean, we went too shy, I think, like not even defending, keeping the racing line. I don't understand it, but still, I think he will overtake him now again, I think, I guess. Because it's really close. That's two. Yeah, it's two Mercedes in a Red Bull sandwich at the moment because it's 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th as Reedy gets a little bit on the grass there and I think the Haas boys might be fighting as well. Supercharged looks like he's got some good pace on fairly old hard cop out of tyres. Gets up the inside for 5th place. As Reedy gets by d late late as well back for 7th. So as they, it looks like those guys are, are going... Uh, we, it, uh, what's the word? I can't even think of it. Uh, changing places right, left, and center as he goes way wide as the Red Bull and picks up a time penalty for his troubles. But I'm so surprised with Supercharged that he's got this much pace on the hard cop. Look at how old his hard cop tires are. Yeah, I mean, like, really good race from him. 
maybe he's just pushing because he wants to go on the spot. And maybe he knows oh, yeah. he needs to win again. Because otherwise, if he needs to go to the end and he's pushed the, the tires so far, and I don't think he's gonna get to the end, to be honest. Because, I mean, you need to be aggressive sometimes, but play, you need to play the long games. Well, I think he's gonna pay it to be Oh, we're a fun boy. He's lost the car. Position. Oh. Two position. oh, that's an interesting rejoin there. It goes to throw a red ball there, so yeah, he's back down to seventh. Just double check the uh, the stats there at the moment. He came in on lap four. Oh, he's gone round. I put the marker on him. I put the marker on him. Uh, jinxed yeah, <laughs> sorry, supercharge. Sorry, supercharge. Commentator's curse strikes again. Uh, yeah, I dare say he might be coming into the pit lane now. Oh, the Super City's looking aggressive. Both. Uh, got him. Reedy's got him. Had to do a bit of barging, but he got it done. Wow, what a scrap. And uh, James is really close to then the race race where he's never lost the uh, DRS, uh, but then is actually not using. Maybe he doesn't have a button like to select DRS. I don't understand it, to be honest. Yeah, like, it's a weird one. Keeping losing time. I mean, like, usually you want to have that one second gap on the car behind, so you just save, like, some like strange maneuvers or generally overtaking. Um, but I mean, if he feels happy with P2, that, that's fair enough. Like, but I don't understand it, to be honest. Mm, yeah, it's a it's a weird one. Maybe obviously he doesn't feel like he's got the pace for the race win. Obviously, not really much in the. I don't think he's really much in the championship fight. Obviously, hold on, man. Dan still fighting for second in the championship. Obviously, so he's got everything to play for. And obviously, Alpha can have a bit of a play in the constructors' standings as well. Because here he was only two Alphas and one Williams driver. That was the case the last time back in Mexico. So um, good op good opportunity to do Alpha to try and get uh, the lead oh, in constructors as F1 boy, boy and Reedy uh, still battling. We're going to go side ball. by side three to three. Not the ideal line. Don't go up the rear end there. He managed to avoid it. This is not really helping Reedy too much because he's got a... What has he got? Let's have a look at the penalty situation. So, three seconds for he, for CN Goat, and for Supercharge. Six seconds for uh, Delayed Late uh, Tent and uh, Galas, who's now dropped back behind Prost Professor. So, his battle with Albino Josh has ended for the time being. I mean, really can't stay behind F1 boy for too much longer. If he wants to like build a three-second gap, as you're going very sideways through turn 11 there. If he wants to build a three-second gap, he's got to get past F1 boy as quickly as he can and, and build that gap up. That's, that, that's no other choice for you, really, is there? Yeah, and it looks really aggressive. Like he's drifting, he's drifting all over the place. And let's see if he can, if he can get the move down right now. Because he's got a battery advantage, but I don't think it looks like he's gonna make a move. No, he's not. Yeah, he no. needs to create that three second gap at some point. It's just six laps remaining, and this is not a really long track. So he needs to get past now. Otherwise, he's gonna lose a lot of places with a Tonki as well, for example. Yeah, delayed late, another three second time penalty as well. But yeah, his teammate is probably looking more likelihood to take advantage of this well the other two in front have got penalties so get some good advantage here uh, good, get some good points here well Tonki you stay with this group here which is still pretty much Mercedes Red Bull Mercedes Red Bull pretty much nearly what you see in real life although not quite at the front compared to what it is in real life but oh Dan very very way out wide a turn 12 there I just caught the back end of that one but uh, managing to hang on for the time being that margin is just getting bigger between Hold Up Man Dan and Dan the Roasters. He sets another fastest lap of 19.046 this late on in the race. It's just untouchable, really, at the moment. James has got DRS, but I don't think he's really quite close for a move here. You know, he's too far back, I think. So just have to bide his time for now. Yeah, Hold Up Man Dan is actually legitimating his win. Pace is two times down again in the 
first sector, so maybe we're gonna see another fast slap incoming. Um, but yeah, F1 boy now seems to have created whole margin. It's greedy. It's gonna charge with fast slap. Okay, so it's not gonna be reachable for all man, all that man then, to be honest. Um, we never know. It could shock us. It may just set the world alight on a set of hard compound tires. You never know. But I mean, that's that's probably going to be unbeatable for Supercharged there. So he'll probably likely get the extra bonus points at the moment. Yeah. I mean, the only one maybe can come from the racer because of his battery he has. I know I'm not. I'm, I'm just focusing on him because, I mean, looking at the driver's point of view, like, it's... Kinda, I don't know, considering the win without even trying, it's not, I don't know guys, like, I, I, I've not, I've got anything against him, so, so, just to be clear, but, <laughs> it seems pointless, to be honest. Yellows yeah, oh, in sector three, three. Okay. it's Pros Professor Pros. that is around. It looks like he's got away without any damage there, but it's cost him a lot of time. So I think he was battling around that uh, Gala's Albino Josh battle. And that's just that battle still going off a tenth at the moment. Let's see where we are with the Red Bull Mercedes gang at the moment. Reedy now gets a three, another three-second time penalty, so that takes him to six. So F1 boy looking comfortable maintaining P5. Like we mentioned earlier, obviously El Tonki might take full advantage of his teammate and uh, the uh, delayed late, obviously getting penalties in front. So if you could just stay with these guys, you'll be on track for sixth place at this point. Yeah, which is a good recovery. Let's remember, he started last because he got disqualified. Hmm. As Prost comes in for a set of soft compound of tyres, so he'll try and go for a faster slap. Well, James just can't seem to get past uh, Dan the racer. He's trying. He's a little bit closer this time around. So, although, he's, uh, although Dan might use his uh, ERS here, which he is, so that might be uh, helping him out here, which will be probably annoying James. Oh, Tolki now gets a three-second time. We, we do it to commentators. I'll just shut up now, do I? The commentator's curse happens every single time. Yeah, but El Tonki... For now, we'll get P6 anyways, because BD has 6 seconds and delay that is 9. So, he will get P6 anyway, not bad for him at the moment. Yeah, no, no, that's fair enough anyway, but um, still this fight for second here. James is trying every which way he can, trying everything, but he's still within that one second window. He just needs a big error. There's a little bit of a backwards moment there for Dan the Racer through 7 and 8. Through turn nine. Ready still on the back of F1 boy by the looks of it, so gonna try and keep him on his toes here. Although he needs to get going now, otherwise his time is running out for a, a good result. Let's see what uh, James can get a little bit closer here. Save up a lot more ERS compared to last time, so. Only 30% difference this time around. He's still got the DRS, but see, Dan will burn up his ERS. Yeah, but that's key because James is not using it. So Dan has lost a lot of ERS compared to James in this lap. And now they have the same level. So mm. this is going to be crucial in the, in the next two laps because James has a really big shot towards P2 right now. Maybe this is why Dan was maybe saving up his ERS. Maybe he knew that there might have been a, uh, might be an attack like later on in the race, so he just decided to save up all his ERS, save up all the battery, and uh, just prepare for a battle for basically to be second and third, really, because Black Moon's about four or seconds behind, so uh, likely he won't get the pony, but he's still pushing on with 19 lap of hard compounded tyres. The other battle's still going on behind with these guys. Yeah, Black Moon is in full tyre management. Yeah, I mean, I actually disagree with what you said, like, with Dan. I mean, okay, it's cool, like, to have some ERS to defend. But I think if he used it, like, a bit more, like, he should have been one second away from James, so this wouldn't even be a problem. In my, in my opinion, oh, James has been a mistake, actually. And Dan as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Yeah, he just got out of the one second bracket, but now, well, he's still in the one second bracket. I thought for a second he might have just broken DRS, but not the case here. So we'll start to claw him in. Not using ERS, and neither is Dan the Racer. So they're pretty much on even Stevens now with ERS. So James has really got to have a crack, maybe, at the last lap. Don't want to risk it too much, obviously, because you'll either you want to have a good, obviously, finish in P3 or risk it and then end up backwards somewhere and dropping a couple of spots which not really ideal but i think everything else is looking a bit settled though 10th is might be still 10 11 12 these guys are still battling away for position so they're pretty much close at the moment it's now or never for james last shot uh will be um his last corner otherwise it's going to be position Oh, Dan goes a little bit wider, 10, so that gives him a little bit more momentum. They both weren't using ERS, because he did take in two different lines here, one taking the sort of out in line of being Dan the Racer. They've got exactly the same amount of ERS. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. If you get a good run here, which eh, sort of does, but I don't think it really be matter too much. You have to burn it. So will Dan the Racer, but we're on the last lap here. Hold up, man. Dan has just pretty much been domination at the moment. Seven and a half seconds clear. This fight really for second. As you can see, he's just getting closer. And he's probably going to lose momentum now through that first quarter. Trying to go for a, a little bit of a late dive bomb. I don't think it was really worth a dive bomb. But you literally have to chuck the car in at every single corner just to have a crack here. Because there's really not many more chances left. Yeah, last shot is now in turn 10, so otherwise Dan makes a mistake or something. Uh, oh, and yeah. yeah a little bit of a back end Dan loss. Really yeah, exactly. Yeah, and he's just it. hanging on. He'll have to try something. He'll have to break as deep as he can, but they're pretty much even at the top. So this might be where these two finish up, but we'll go back to the front here. This man has just been so dominant. He started on from position two on the grid, and he's just had awesome pace. He'll make it back-to-back -back wins here at the Spanish Grand Prix. Dan the Racer is just going to hang on for a second spot in the end. That was a great battle. James Cruz tried everything, but just couldn't get there in the end. So he'll have to finish, settle for third in the end. Black Moon. So they had a pretty good drive in the end, starting on a soft compound of tyres to get fourth place. So good drive from him. Uh, F1 boy gets into fifth. Reedy, sixth. El Tonki gets seventh, obviously, with the penalties. Uh, that's seeing Goat in eighth. D late, late in ninth. And there's a yellow flag for some unknown reason. I don't know why. Look at that margin for ninth and tenth. There's like nothing. Albino Josh could have had ninth nearly, but just missed Whoa. out by five milliseconds as Supercharger's just. DNF across the line, I think. Or well, just before the line, so... Before crossing the line, didn't you? Uh, he, I think he will get classified because he did complete 90% of the race, but he'll obviously drop back behind Prost Professor. We won't actually get to see his car. But, um... That is a little bit awkward. It's quite, they uh, crashed just before the finish line. I've had that happen before to me. Anyway, so, um... But there you go. Who got the driver of the day? El Tonki. Probably a fair shout there. No one really. I think no one else really but El Tonki. Come from the back of the grid. Up in the sixth place I think it was. So there's Alpha Mick up on the uh, the top step of the podium. Police have win. But you are from a driver. Yep, back-to-back -back wins for him. Obviously winning out in Mexico and now uh, the Spanish Grand Prix. He's got to uh, think that'll probably now put him second in the championship if my maths is correct. But um, we'll go through the final race results on his screen. So 7.3 seconds was the margin in the end between Hold Up and Dan and Dan the Racer. James Cruz started from pole. He tried everything to get past Dan the Racer, but finishes up in P3. Black Moon 
He pushed a long way on the soft compound of tyres, but managed to get to P4 there. Uh, F1 boy in P5. Reedy gets the better in P6, from coming from 14th on the grid. El Tonki of 17th to 7th, actually. So it was my bad. I thought he was 6th, but he was 7th, actually. Uh, CN Goat in position 8. Delayed late in 9th. And Albino Josh rounds out your top 10. The champion elect finished up in P11. Uh, tent Sandals there. Uh, didn't quite have the pace by the look of it this weekend. Hopefully you want to rectify that come the next round at Japan. But Gala is in 12th. Probably not a great result after what occurred on lap one. Uh, Drow, uh, don't think he'll be classified considering he left the session. Prost Professor in 14th and Supercharge in 15th. And the two DNFs being Toto and Semi Pro. So it was okay. It was, it was an okay-ish race. Probably wasn't the similar, similar to what it was in Tier 3. But I think it was okay. Would you agree, Alex? Yeah, it wasn't the best race I've ever watched, to be honest, but I mean, it delivered racing, uh, and uh, it was there, there were a lot of big scraps, to be honest. <laughs> Not for the main positions, like the leading ones, but still, it was fun to watch. No doubt about that. Uh, a couple of chat comments here. Uh, Daniel Bram, awesome commentary, fellas. Thank you. Uh, supercharged. My card couldn't go in reverse, and just destroyed my car. So, um, yeah, that's not a great ideal way to uh, to, uh, to cross the finish line there. But let's just get the Alfa Romeo up on the screen here. There we go. Get rid of all that. So, hold up. Uh, no, yeah, hold up, man. Dan makes it back-to-back -back wins. I think that'll probably do it here for the um, for the Spanish Grand Prix. Go tune in to the other uh, tiers, well, if they're still going or not. Um, Alex, you'll probably be doing Euro tier tom well tomorrow. It'll be tomorrow morning for me, but it'll be tomorrow. Oh, sorry, uh, tonight for you. I'm pretty sure. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. The race is gonna start in basically eight hours. Uh, it's gonna be Euro tier one, tier two, and tier three. Uh, so race back uh, never ends. Basically, uh, the whole day got races, and uh, hopefully, I can get uh, in my case uh, a good race and try to get a podium. I mean, the main goal. But so tune in to those. Well, I don't know what the streams are on in Euro side of things, but uh, tune in to those streams, whatever they are. And of course, America's side of things as well. There will be also on. But um, mate, thank you for taking, for coming in the commentary box and helping me out. It certainly saved my voice for doing uh, two singular streams in one go. So big thank you, mate. And uh, hopefully we can co uh, commentate some other time. Yeah, thanks a lot. It was a pleasure as always, and uh, I hope we can uh, we can commentate again. Uh, maybe in two weeks I would be available again, so let's see. Uh, but anyway, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much. See you guys next time. Pleasure. Uh, two weeks' time is Monaco, but uh, next week is the Japanese Grand Prix. I'll take it over to the ending side of things. So, uh, big thanks to everybody that watched. Uh, apologies if there was a few drop frames. Obviously, that might have been along the way. That's probably because we had a, uh, obviously had a commentator alongside me. So, um, yeah. But uh, smash the like button if you did enjoy it. And subscribe to the Racebeck Esports channel if you haven't already. Uh, if you want to go follow the social media channels, they're down in the description. The Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, they're all down there. If you want to come join the league, there's a Discord link down below. There's only... Uh, well, Spain and another three races to go at uh, Japan, Monaco and Brazil to finish off this season. But um, I think that's where we'll end the stream now. So, yeah, till next week, which will be Japan for uh, the Pacific side of things. I'll tune in on Sunday as well for the RS, the race spec F1 leagues as well. So uh, I think I'll be back for RS4 on Sunday. So do tune in for that one. But until then, it is goodbye.